So hello everybody. Uh, today I'm presenting continuous delivery with uh, Jenkins, Docker, and Mesos. Um, my name is Julia Mateo. I'm a Java developer uh, working for a Swiss company, uh, Ortiz. And I also belong to the Dutch uh, Swiss um, team, um, a women organization to give visibility of, uh, of women working in the tech world. Uh, this is my, these are my address, uh, Twitter, my Twitter addresses. Mm. So as I, uh, we are going to talk about continuous delivery. What's continuous delivery? This is the definition of Martin Fowler. Continuous delivery is the capacity of uh, going to production, to release to production uh, at any moment. Mm. This slide is just to present the, the slight difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment. So as, as I said, uh, continuous delivery is the capacity of going to production at any moment. Continu when we do continuous deployment, it's the next step is do this automatically. We don't click to any button, we just commit and, and this modification will go to production directly. This is the typical pipeline of a, of a continuous delivery um, system. Uh, in, in the architecture I'm going to present you today, we are going to use Git as a version control. Uh, the build unit testing and, and deployment is going to take place in a Jenkins server. And we are going to deploy to a test server. To a test server. Uh, all these phases uh, will give us a feedback to improve this, this pipeline. So we are going to use Docker in, in this pipeline. Uh, how many of you use Docker uh, today or know a bit, have played a bit? Okay. Um, so Docker is a, here's the definition, is an open platform for developers, sys admins, uh, to build, ship and run distributed applications. So we, with this definition we could say, oh, okay, it's another virtual machine, but actually it's not. Um, there is some basic differences. So in, in this part I'm going to explain how virtual machines work. Um, we would have the server the operating system of the, of the host and the hypervisor. The hypervisor is going to be responsible of creating the virtual machines and, and keep the isolation between them. Each of the virtual machine is going to have its own guest uh, operating system, its own copy of binaries and libraries and, and the application running on them. On the other hand, uh, we have four Docker containers. In this case, we have the server, the operating system and we are going to have the Docker uh, daemon instead of the hypervisor. The Docker daemon is going to be responsible of sharing the kernel of the operating system between the four containers. Mm, and it's going to run the containers uh, as well. Mm, so we are going to share the kernel between, between the containers, but also all the libraries and binaries in common. Uh, this is going to make containers faster at startup but the isolation is going to be uh, sm uh, little. Uh, it is going to be less than with the virtual machines. Mm, so in Docker, there are two main concepts. There's the Docker image concept and the container. And a Docker image, we could say it's the combination of several uh, read-only snapshots of your operating system. So I can have an image of a web app uh, turning in a Jetty server I'm going to have, uh, it's going to be the combination of a CentOS operating system with the Jetty and the web app. Mm, a container, it's an instant running of this image. Uh, its state is going to be immutable. So if I don't do anything else than run the container, if I stop it, I'm going to lose all the modification I've done to this container. So to sum up why we are using Docker for continuous delivery, First, because it's simple, we are not going to manipulate wars or artifacts or script deployment, uh, deployment scripts. Uh, we are used, going to use the, the container as deployment unit. It's fast, 
because as I said, um, we share resources and we share the kernel of the operating system. When we are going to build the image, we are just going to build or upload the delta image, the difference between the actual image and the, and the previous one. It's robust also because even if it's a quite new solution, uh, Docker, we will have less code of error than if we used uh, uh, scripts uh, or if we do mm, manual manipulations. Uh, other advantages are that in few commands we can roll back uh, what we have done. So first, let's start simple. We are going to deploy to one node of uh, Exoscale. Exoscale is like DigiCard Cloud or Amazon. It's a Swiss cloud uh, solution. Um, we are going to, to deploy a really old-fashioned uh, <laughs> web app. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I wanted to change it, but <laughs> at the end it was the simplest one. Um, so first we have some developers uh, working in, in our pipeline. They are going to commit to GitLab or GitHub. Mm, Jenkins it is going to detect uh, the modification we have made and launch a sonar analysis, uh, archive uh, the artifact in Nexus. Mm, and the new part would start here. We are going to use the Docker Publish plugin to, uh, to save the, the image of our project into a Docker private repository. In Docker, we have the Docker Hub that is similar to the Git, to GitHub. Um, so it, once you have a Docker account, you can publish there, you can stock there uh, your, your images. But if we work for a private company, we, maybe we can use a private repo. Um, and we are going to use the SSH Jenkins plugin to, to connect us to the remote servers, uh, to the remote server, and run the container of our image. Mm, so let's see deeper Docker Publish plugin. It's really easy to use. We just have to to specify the the repository name. It's the only mandatory uh, mandatory field. Mm, in the image I showed you before. Um, I will explain you later, but Jenkins runs in a Docker container. And as Docker is going to use uh, the Docker Publish plugin, he will need to, to execute some Docker commands inside a Docker container. So we are going to need to run Docker into Docker. For doing this, we just have to, we just uh, can import this image that is available in the Docker Hub. It's written by one of the guys uh, working for Docker. So we just have to, to import this image and, and use it. And this will work. Um, I, I said we are going to use a Docker private registry. Mm, it's really easy to, to use a Docker uh, private re registry. Uh, we just n need to prefix the tag name the tag name of our image with the IP and the port of our Docker private repository. And finally, we are using the SSH Jenkins plug plugin, which is not new, as you, image, you know. Uh, we are just going to connect to the remote node and execute these commands. We are going to pull the, the image we just talked in the Docker private registry, stop the, the container in case it's running, and relaunch uh, this one, mapping the, the port to the ET80. So this would be the, the final architecture. We will have two, no, two instances of uh, exascale. One of them with the five containers, and in the other one we, we, we deploy the pet clinic web app. So the problems of this design are obvious. Uh, we have a problem of scalability because we just have one node and we, we are not able to, to scale the app easily. And also fault tolerance because if the node fails, um, we stop the service. So in the next step, we are going to deploy to a Mesos cluster. So we would keep the, the first node uh, uh, design and, but we are going to deploy to, um, to, to, one, to a cluster with two slaves, two meso slaves, 
and two and one master, Mesos master. But what is Mesos? Mesos is the abstraction of, of a cluster of cluster resources. Mm, the aim is to be able to have different frameworks in the in the same cluster, because there there is not the optimal framework for all problems. Mm, so maybe we can we want to have Hadoop and Spark running in the same cluster. Uh, Mesos is going to to provide the minimal interface in common to to permit doing this. Mm, it's going to to facilitate um, fair sharing of resources and data quality. Mm, so this this would be an example of a Mesos cluster. Mm, to be a, a production ready with Mesos, we need at least three Mesos masters and three Mesos slaves. Uh, Zookeeper uh, is going to um, to care about the the fail failover of the masters, the, pos the possible failover of one of the masters. It's going in case of one fail fails over, he's going to to select the backup for it. So in this case, we have nine no nine slaves of Mesos. Five of them is go are going to run Spark and four Hadoop. But how does this work? So Mesos um, works with resource offers. We will have three three types of um, op of objects. We have the slaves, we have the master, and we have the frameworks that are the applications: Hadoop, or Marathon, or Spark. So first of all, a slave is going to tell to tell the master, "I have these resources, like I have." A, to CPUs, I have four giga of memory. Mm, Mesos is going to say, okay, I'm going to offer these resources to a framework. Uh, so he tells the framework one, uh, I have these resources, the, the app, the app can, and the framework can say, okay, I, I want these resources, these are the tasks I'm, I want to launch on them. And master is, the master is going to take these tasks and launch them on the slaves. Mm. In this case, uh, we are using a Marathon framework. So Marathon is like another message framework. It's written in Scala. And it's nice for us because it, mm, it makes uh, really easy uh, the deployment of Docker containers in Mesos. Mm. Its aim is to, to manage long-running applications. And, and it's nice also because it offers a, a REST API. So it's really easy to, to use, to deploy an app, to delete it. So this is the example I showed you before. Marathon would be here. He would, rec he would receive the, the commands with the elements to deploy in the, in the cluster. Um, to, do the, to do this post in the, pipe, uh, in the pipeline, pipeline I showed you before, we are going to use the HTTP request plugin. I think it's not uh, a new plugin as well. So we just have to specify which type of HTTP operation and the JSON to send. And now I'm going to show you how this pipeline works. So as I said, I used the Exascale Cloud Solution and this Swiss company. Mm, we have four instances. We have the SA server, which contains all the Docker containers with Jenkins, uh, the Docker registry. Uh, then we have the Mesos master, which is Jupyter, and we have two slaves, IO and Ganymede. Mm. Uh, 
So this is the, the Jenkins server. We have just one job called the pet clinic. And we do everything in this job. We usually do, don't do like this in, at work. Um, so well, in this example, I use Git, GitHub uh, with the, the Docker app. Mm. This is the configuration of the Docker Publish plugin. So we, I just specified the tag name of the image. And this is the post we, and the JSON we are going to send to Marathon. So this is the ID of the, of the task. The resources we are going to need a half of a CPU, one giga of record memory, the type of the application, which is Docker, the name of the image, and the network parameters that is bridge. This means we are going to map the container port 8080 to the message default port, uh, which is zero by, by convention, but it's going to be a, a random port message gives to the to the slave. Uh, this is a constraint. So he will say, I just want to run the app uh, in one instance of the app in each node. I don't want uh, the app mm, running twice in, in, one, in one instance. So now we are running the job. Here are some really interesting jobs. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> we don't want this. <laughs> So here, there is the Docker Publish plugin building the image. As you see, we have the log, the log, uh, the log uh, already exists because we we use the the cache, the cache uh, of Docker if. As I said, the image is a combination of, uh, of image layer, layers. If we just modify one, the others, we are going to take profit of cache and reuse them. So it's going to be quite fast. Uh, so here, there is the JSON we are going to send to Marathon. And we can see it succeeded. Um, this is the Marathon admin console. So here we wow. So here we can see the application was correctly deployed in two nodes, which are started. And this is the Mesos admin console. So here we are going to have uh, more information about resources of the cluster. Um, so here we have the, the active tasks which are run a minute ago, uh, the slaves. Uh, there are two active slaves, and the resources available, the ones that are used, the offer, the yield. faster than the video. <laughs> so we have the tab of frameworks. We have just Marathon, but we could have, we could have others. And the, the slave tab, where we have all the, all the, all the slaves. 
we can also access to, to the logs of the Docker container here. And um, I think I, I didn't say it. We are using HA proxy in the in the master node to do, to do basic operations of load balancing between the two slaves of, of Mesos. So I make a small improvement to the to the application, and we are we are seeing the IP of the slave uh, executing the app. So as you see. Uh, uh, we will see it later, but when we refresh the the page of the app, it's going to to change with the IPs of the of the application of the of the slave. It's not really user friendly the name because I think it's the the name of the physical machine in in exascale. But as you see, there are two uh, all the time. Well, and this was the, the first demo. Um, and in the second demo, I wanted to show you a small example of recovering from, from a failure, how message works in case of failure and marathon. So uh, we are going to stop one of the slaves and we are going to, to see how it reacts. So we, we still have the two slaves running. And now we are going to stop one of the slaves with ex exoscale. So now when, when we are going to refresh the app, we will see there is just one IP, but the, the app is still up. In this case, the HA, the HA proxy is configured to check for modifications in the cluster each one second. Each second, he's going to see if there are changes. But you can configure as, as you want. On the other hand, as you see, Mesos reacts a, a bit later. Uh, we have staging but, and running. And in marathon, in marathon also we see there is just one, <coughs> one slave running. And we are going to continue the slides. So this slide, just to show you a bit of the configuration, mm, it's really simple. Um, so we have a script that is generating this uh, all the time. Uh, this is a screenshot of the configuration one, once one of the slaves is down. Uh, so this is the, the front end. We are saying the inputs uh, are on the port 80. And on the back end, we are having the GBSN conf Petlin cluster. And this is the description of the back end. In this case, we have just one of the instances. But if we have the, f the two slaves running, here we, we have the other IP with another uh, ID. Mm. This is OK when deploying to test, because we interrupt the service. But what happens when we deploy to production? Mm, there are two known uh, techniques. So there is the canary releasing and the blue-green deployment. 
So in the first one, we will have two uh, identical production uh, hardware. So if we have um, two databases, then the machines will be the, the same, um, for the backend, the same. Um, so we have the old version of the, of the application running in one of them, and we are going to deploy the new one in the other identical environment. We are going to switch with the proxy some uh, little by little user request to the new version. We check if it's going okay. If it's the case, we, we, we change more and more uh, until we finish. The blue, the, in the blue-green deployment, we have the same architecture, two identical copies of the, of the environment, but we are going to do this at once. We, we switch. Um, so in the second one, we are sure uh, it works. <laughs> mm, so I wanted to, to put two slides about my, my experience because I'm not a, an ops. Uh, I am a Java developer. Mm, so working on this, I had to familiarize with a lot of quite new technologies like uh, Ansible. I used Ansible. I don't know if you know Ansible. It's a solution to do orche orchestration and configuration. It's like um, Chef or Puppet. Mm, and today, it's, a lot of people from the Docker community are, are using is using it because uh, you don't need to, to install an agent on the remote uh, instance. Ansible does this for you. It installs it and then it, it uh, un uninstalls it. So it's transparent for the, um, transparent for the user. Mm, Docker also, uh, I knew it some months ago, and Mesos, Marathon, a lot of new technologies, and all of them are quite new. It's interesting, but it's a lot of work. Um, on the other hand, I have to say, uh, they are really easy to, to start up for a developer, I, I, fo I found. Mm, and they have a really big community, a lot of information uh, on the web. So com uh, as new improve, uh, as next improvements, um, I think I would like to, to get deeper into proxy configuration to, de to, to be able to do this canary uh, releasing blue-green deployment. And and also service discovery, because here we just have one application with a database in memory. But imagine we have a, an Oracle database on the backend in, in another web application, and the database is running in one instance, and, and, and a Jetty is running in another to know where we have, where is running each one of the services. We could use uh, DNS Mesos, or there is a console also. Mm. So this would be the next improvement to, for me. Um, this was all. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do you have some questions? Or? Yes? I don't, I don't hear you, I'm sorry. Okay, it, it's very typical in a Jenkins build process to mm. go through various phases of static analysis and testing before you do deployment to production. Now, what kind of test techniques have you explored when you're looking at Docker images? And what can you do with Docker images in terms of static analysis or test before you do deployment? Actually, I find one, one of the main advantages of Docker is that one, once it works in your, mach in your machine, it works everywhere because it's, it's an immutable container. Yeah. Uh. The, the question is, how do you know the image is working? What do you do to test the ah, image? The image. So you've created an image. And, and you think it's okay, ah, okay, but how do you know? Uh, you can make uh, acceptance test, functional test, like, I don't know, sub UI. Ah, there are also uh, health checks 
yeah. that can be um, in the JSON we, we send to to Marathon. There is a part that I didn't add it because the web app uh, has not a server uh, a, ser a servlet servlet that sends the the okay. It's not ready, but there is a health check you can send, and and it's going to check if if the um, if it's okay, the, the application is, is turning, for example. Th that's that just to, to know it's up and running. If you if you want to check more functionality before deploying to production, you can have a, a step in the middle, deploy to a test machine and launch, I don't know, Selenium tests, for example. Okay, are, are there well-defined frameworks or patterns for how you do that kind of thing with Docker specifically? Mm. Or is there nothing special to think about? No, uh, but now I don't see why should we have a thing specific. Because the advantage of the Docker container is that it's immutable. You don't do any manual manipulations. So it's going to be the same as in test than in production. Famous last words. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Hello. Yeah. First of all, is that uh, well, uh, Docker it can work in your in your test machine, but not in production because of different distros and so on. I mean that uh, yeah, when you start to explore very much yes, Docker, I but yeah. I mean that for, for the testing purposes, it's important to test in all the environments as well, and not trusting in that Docker. But well, it's another history of Docker. Uh, uh, we are doing something similar in my company, <coughs> and we started with Mesos Marathon and we changed it to CoreOS. And this is why you choose uh, Marathon Mesos, or if you explore other uh, possibilities for doing the same thing. And the, ne and the second question is about, uh, yeah, all this solution is Jenkins focus, but sometimes as a developer you want to um, reproduce what you're doing and, and, and locally debugging or, or, t or testing on, on your machine. And, and if you have how you have fixed this problem? Mm, the case of you want to run the app in your local machine, for example? Yeah, o everything. I mean that you take, uh, you have four uh, containers, for example, that they are, well, your application contains four containers and you deploy it in uh, mm -hmm. Mesos, but sometimes you say, okay, I want to deploy to my in test my infrastructure from my computer to debug something or to inspect that it's, do I mean that you need, uh, I mean that, for what I understand is that in this case you need Jenkins to do this. You cannot do it from your machine mm. um, because well, you need the Jenkins plugins and so on. Yes. Well, if it's a multi-service app, may I would use uh, Docker Compose, uh -huh. a script. Uh, um, Docker Compose is a utility from Docker uh, to use multi-service con uh, applications to connect, link uh, different con containers. No. I think for running in a local host, we don't need a, to simulate a Mesos cluster or whatever. I think just using Docker Compose uh -huh. would do the, okay. the job. Okay, thanks. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>